I'd like to welcome everybody to the Canadian Underground Forum. This is the first, uh, first event um, in Canada for, uh, as part of GeoIgnite, uh, dealing specifically with the underground. We've got some really fantastic speakers lined up. And I'd like to welcome everybody uh, to the event. And I like a, you know, I think that uh, if it if this turns out to be successful, we'll we will try to repeat this in in other years. What I'd like to do is first just uh, uh, this is going to be a very brief introduction, but I'd like to give uh, a little bit of context uh, for what we're talking about. So I'm going to talk, just remind everybody why it's important to worry about underground infrastructure. I think everybody on, on, on the call will, will, will be aware of this already. So this may be a repeat for a lot of people, but I think it's just good to, to, to put what we're doing in context so we know that this is not just sort of an academic ex exercise. Second thing is that this is, is a very unique time in the construction industry. And I'll talk just briefly about, about where some of the money is coming from to pay for infrastructure and the fact that there seems to be a, a rise in the uh, in venture capital investment in startups. And, um, and I think that you'll see evidence for that in uh, some of the talks we're gonna have at, at this event. After that, I'll go through some of the really innovative things that are happening in this, in this area um, worldwide, but specifically in North America and in Canada. Um, First of all, some of the really interesting technology for locating things underground. Uh, this includes um, what people refer to as, uh, as a reality capture. Um, and uh, I'll also talk about how we're dealing with the problem that we capture, we, we actually you know, every time we do a, a call to a call to the one call center, somebody comes out and marks the ground, detects where things are, marks the ground, and uh, we spend something like ten billion dollars a year doing that kind of thing in North America every year. Um, but a lot of that information isn't captured, and so some of the new technology, which I'll refer to as mobile plus cloud, is designed specifically to address address that problem. And then. Uh, I'll talk also about uh, what's happening with respect to standards. We're really lucky uh, today to have Jim Ansbach, who has been with the ASCE uh, from the early days, from 3802 on. Um, and he's going to talk about uh, a, a new standard from ASCE, which is imminent, um, which is, uh, is commonly referred to as the utility as built standard, which is actually being used in, in Colorado. And then we'll talk a little bit about legislation and, uh, and uh, regulation. And we'll talk about Colorado, but we'll talk about some other jurisdictions that have just done some remarkable things to push, you know, basically um, the, uh, uh, a legislative and regulatory agenda forward that will result in much better and much more reliable data about what's, under, what's underground. So first of all, why is locating and mapping underground infrastructure important? Again, like I think a lot of people will recognize this uh, as, a, as a problem. This is from a book from, from Jim Onspach and C.P. Scott. Um, and you can get the same information from the, federal, from the Federal Highway Administration in the US, but basically construction projects, the big, one of the biggest causes, the, at one time, F, the, the, the FHWA said that it was the single biggest cause of construction project delays is not knowing where things are underground. Um, and that means there's a lot of projects that are delayed or, uh, or, or, or have uh, budget overruns um, because of the fact that they don't know where things are underground during the design phase. This is just something to, to put this, you know, put this in context. There's not, there aren't very good numbers for how many, how many people are actually killed um, every year uh, from uh, hitting things underground. But I think there's a consensus that it's on the order uh, over a 20 year period, for example, it's on the order of hundreds of deaths and thousands of injuries. And just for comparison, if you look at US commercial airplane crashes over the last 23 years, it's on the same order of magnitude. One of the really big differences though, is that the FAA has a budget of something like $70 billion annually. And in the 
uh, when it comes to underground infrastructure, we have the Common Ground Alliance, which is a voluntary uh, organization not paid for by government. Um, and the only real organization that is uh, subs is paid by government is FIMSA, PHMNC. It's basically the the, uh, the federal um, pipeline uh, regulatory agency for federally federally re um, regulated pipelines in the U.S., which has a bu budget somewhere in the, uh, so, somewhere in the order of 225 million. So. It's one. It, this whole area is something that has not really received the attention it has, and the good news is that in the last two or three years, it the awareness of this problem has really become worldwide, um, and a lot of jurisdictions like Colorado, for example, are actually doing something about it. My estimate for a number of years has been that this is a fifty to hundred million drag on the fifty, a fifty to hundred billion dollar drag on the U.S. economy. Common Ground Alliance is estimated as a $33 billion drag. Uh, it's, you know, basically it's tens of billions of dollars on the U.S. economy. And if you take one-tenth of that, that would give you some idea of what the drag is on the Canadian economy. Um, the, the really hard part about this is trying to estimate indirect costs, which includes uh, loss of custom, traffic disruption, and, and and so on. But even this estimate of 50 to 100 billion dollars in the U.S. Is, is an underestimate. And I mentioned before, uh, every year uh, in the U.S., and it'd be about one-tenth of this in Canada, uh, we spend something like 10 billion dollars, this is an estimate from people in the industry, finding things underground. This includes one call center, you know, utilities sending out their crews, uh, professional locators trying to find things underground. And the really uh, frustrating thing about this is that this information is rarely recorded. It's often used, it just becomes a project file. And when the project is over, it disappears. Um, and the result is that if you call a Gwen call center this year and say, I'm gonna dig here, vans from the utilities and telecoms will come out and mark the ground and put plant flags. You do the same thing two years from now or a year from now, the same thing will happen because the information is, as I said, is rarely shared or recorded. Now, I mentioned at the beginning that this is a very special time in the construction industry. And I'm just gonna give you some, just some simple, some simple facts. First of all, since 2003, a lot of the data, the, the, a lot of the capital for funding uh, construction projects, capital construction projects, highways, bridges, you know, that kind of thing, um, has increasingly come from private sources. And by private sources, I mean pension funds, uh, insurance companies, uh, sovereign wealth funds, those are the biggest sources. There's something like $60 trillion in, in, in those private sources. And the difference between funding projects with government money and funding projects with private money is that government is looking for social returns, private money is looking for a financial return. And when and that what that really drives is a focus on productivity. And if you know anything about construction, construction productivity has been in the doldrums for the last 50 years uh, compared to, for example, airplane manufacturing or car manufacturing and whatever. And a lot of people have flagged this as a, as a really big problem. And, the fact that there's private money going into construction means that there is going to be a lot more investment in technology to improve productivity in construction. And one, 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 one uh, area where there's evidence of that is the venture capital investment in construction startups. This is, this is, this, this is, is private money from, you know, from venture capital uh, sources uh, and these these folks are looking for a return. They're not looking for a social return. They're looking to make money off these things. And you can see that this is this is this is increasing. And I think some of the talks we're going to hear from some of the from the leading from some of the leaders in startups and construction that you're going to hear today are going to be the, you know evidence of you know the fact that there's a lot more venture capital going into construction startups. So that just gives you a little bit of context of what's happening in in construction. Now. There's been some really interesting things in, in, uh, in specifically in the area of underground. I mentioned reality capture using things like LIDAR, photogrammetry, other technologies that capture things, usually exposed uh, infrastructure or newly, in, newly installed infrastructure. There's some really remarkably new, new, te new technologies for locating things underground, either remote sensing or 
uh, using, for example, uh, aerial and satellite uh, photography. Uh, I mentioned before that cloud, cloud and mobile has become a really important technology for capturing and sharing underground information. Uh, so instead of spending $10 billion to find the same information over and over and over again, we're starting to capture that stuff and making it available to, to everybody in the construction, in the construction uh, industry. One, one area that is really getting a lot of attention these, now is, is these days is digital twins. Um, and the fact that initially digital twins were just above ground, but now a lot of jurisdictions are realizing they need to have above, above and below, below ground uh, infrastructure. Um, I mentioned the beginning evolving standards, which includes a new ASCE uh, as-built standard, um, but there's also a new standard from the OGC um, uh, uh, for exchanging information about uh, underground infrastructure. And finally, legislation and regulation, which is really key to making this all work, um, I'll, I'll just give some. I'll just have, I'll just give some examples of that. So these are some of the uh, examples in reality capture. The, the the first one I think really one of the really groundbreaking uh, uh, starts in this area was lidar scanning of pipeline. We have uh, speaker Joseph Lotti who is going to be the, giving the keynote on the first day, specifically talking about how his company Lux Modus has used this to uh, to help the pipeline industry. Um, there's other companies who are who make it possible to do a video capture with a smartphone, usually with RTK, but sometimes with control points. And the really interesting thing is that this data is now being used by some companies and jurisdictions, for example, in Denmark. Instead of capturing paper as built, what they're requesting now is just simply point clouds. There's two reasons for this. One is that Point clouds give you high accuracy. I mean, if you're doing LIDAR, for example, you're getting millimeter accuracy. The second thing is that not only are you getting a 2D or 3D map, but you're getting a lot of information about what's underground. In the case of a pipeline, for example, you can even see weld points. And there's incredible amount of innovations in locating things underground. Um, inertial or gyro mapping, the, and most of these are commercially available. This is not, you know, some of these are still like, for example, quantum effect gravimetry, um, that is still academic, but most of these are now available. And what we're gonna hear from uh, today is we're gonna hear about inertial gyro mapping from Otto Ballantine, who's giving the keynote on the second day. We're also gonna hear about a uh, really remarkable uh, 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 company, um, uh, uh, called 4M Analytics that maps underground assets using satellite and aerial imagery. No boots on the pavement. It's really quite remarkable. And then ground penetrating radar, there has been really some remarkable, remar remarkable advances in this area over the last few years. And we have Simon Pedley uh, uh, from Hexagon or Leica Geosystems to talk about to talk about some of those. Um, I mentioned the beginning cloud plus mobile, which has really been, become key for capturing and sharing data. But, and it means that you can capture data real time during construction, upload it to the, to the cloud, and then share that with all the construction, within minutes for all, for all the construction stakeholders. Here's some examples, Colorado. We're gonna hear from Paige Stucker um, from ProStar, which is, the, uh, which is the, the cloud plus mobile technology that was adopted in Colorado. Montana uh, uh, has done something, uh, not no, nowhere near as comprehensive as Colorado, but still directed at improving the quality of as-built. Um, Locust View has been around for quite some time. It, it basically came out of the gas uh, gas industry, Gas Technology Institute in, partic in particular. And Danny Petrek is going to talk about uh, how 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 the how the technology now is being used to actually create digital twins of uh, of underground infrastructure. In Scotland, there's the Vault System, and we will, we will also hear about a UK initiative which is called the National Underground Asset Registry. Um, which is in development in the UK, and we'll have Neil Br Neil Bramwell uh, from the uh, from the Geospatial Commission in the UK to talk about that. Um, I mentioned digital twins right at the beginning. Uh, one of the one of the jurisdictions that has been on this really from the beginning and has included both above ground and below ground is the city of Rotterdam. And today we're going to have Alex Shalas from UEVO UEVO talk about how his company is making technology available to capture a, di a digital twin of, of city subsurface infrastructure. Estonia has a project uh, for a national digital twin and the UK has also announced some, something, something similar. 
I mentioned standards. Uh, this is a brief list of some of the standards around the world, starting with Japan. Um, um, but as I mentioned before, we have Jim Ansbach who will be talking to us today about the new utility as built standard from the ASC. This will be referred to as 38-21. Uh, I also mentioned the fact that we have, uh, the OGC has been working on a standard for exchanging information and based on existing standards. And we have Karsten Rinsdorf from Neil Bremel from the OGC uh, talking, about, uh, talking about that today. And finally, the most probably one of the most important things is the legislation and regulation. Um, and we have several speakers talking uh, to talk to us about uh, what is going on in their jurisdiction. From Colorado, which I said has really been a leader in North America, Rob Martindale, who works for the Colorado uh, DOT, um, from the UK, from the Geospatial Commission, but related to the newer, the National Underground Asset Registry Initiative, Neil Bramel. In Canada, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, Public Services and Procurement Canada has really done some remarkable things with respect to underground. They're not very well known, and we're lucky to have Jennifer Ross today to tell us a little bit about what's going on there. And the other thing is in Ontario, there's also some remarkable and uh, you know, legislation plus regulatory initiatives um, uh, ongoing to improve the quality of information about the underground. And we have Alan Gatt and, and Gord Reynolds to tell us a little bit about that. And then at the end of the first day, we have a panel specifically on the role of government in improving the quality of underground infrastructure um, mapping. It will, be, uh, it will be moderated by Prashant Shukli. Uh, who used to be in the federal government for quite a number of years in, in mapping and uh, earth observation. And we'll have uh, panelists from Colorado DOT, from UK Geospatial Commission, from Public Service in Procurement Canada, and from Infrastructure Ontario. So I think that's, uh, I think it's really going to be exciting two days. Um, and I just wanted to give you a little bit of a feel for what, what you're going to be able to hear. Um, like I said, leaders in all these areas, technology, legislation and regulation and standards. So I think, I think it'll be a very exciting thing and, uh, and I hope you enjoy, I hope you enjoy the next few days.